I'm excited to announce I'm now at 300 employees. It's a pretty big accomplishment considering less than a year ago, I was maybe at 100, 125. We've come a long way. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm going to share what I've learned over the course of being a CEO and founder of an agency in less than four years, going from just being My Amazon Guy to becoming My Amazon Guy 300 employees, 300 jobs strong. It's a really great article from Get Lighthouse blog. And in here, it talks about all the problems that a culture or a company hits when it gets to 25 employees. And one of the first things that I've really caught on to is that as a company goes from three people with three lines, you can see all the lines that are drawn. And as it goes up to 14 people, it, it exasperates how much information goes back and forth. There's 91 lines as soon as it gets to 40, 14 people. And so your number one problem when you're first starting out is you can't manage everybody after you get to around 25 employees, everything just breaks down galore, which is why one of the biggest things that I've learned is that no manager in the entire company should have more than eight direct reports. And that sometimes means putting a senior employee with a couple of juniors. That sometimes means departments need to be cut in half continuously, right? So like the way that we structure our company at my Amazon guys, we have a brand management team, a catalog management team, but we cut catalog into proactive and reactive measures. We have a advertising team, a search engine optimization team. Most companies don't even have that when they sell on Amazon, let alone a catalog troubleshooting team and on and on and on. There's just so many different teams you have to have, including a sales team and finance and operations and, it, and, and you're always wondering, like, when do I take that one hat off, right? Like, when do I give this hat to the next guy who's going to come in and not do as good of a job as me? That's every CEO's problem, every entrepreneur's challenge to try and take on. Culture is such a big deal when running a company. And one of the most important things that I started doing in the last year was simply asking two questions to my employees. Do you have the tools to do your job? And in July of 2021, we got an 8.7. So I knew, hey, I had some room for some improvement there. I, I went and invested a million dollars into technology. I went out and figured out how to upgrade our tool sets and give everybody the tools that they really needed to do their jobs. Less than three months later, in September of 2021, we got up to a 9.21 that you have the tools to do your job. And I was like, great, we fixed the problem. But then January of 2022, 9.34, we just kept improving it and we kept hiring people who were a, a great culture fit into the organization. The next question I asked was, would you recommend working at my Amazon guy? Significantly harder for us to improve this particular metric because we started out at a 9.3, uh, went up to a 9.36 in September and then January 9.4. Um, I'll be honest, I'm surprised we improved it. Um, it, and I guess sometimes it's really hard to measure uh, success in the broader spectrum of the organization, the larger it gets, right? When you're a team of 20 people, when I first started the company, I had 20 people, um, you know, in the basement of my, my home. I went ahead and finished my basement for the purpose of, of, of putting employees in there. And then one day, um, I think it was actually employee 13 we had in there and we had enough cars in the park, you know, my driveway became a parking lot and the cul-de-sac was filled, and then the fire marshals kind of showed up and said, hey, you can't really run a business with this many people out of your house. And I said, you know what, that kind of makes sense. I'm sorry. And then two days later, we moved out, and this was all uh, pre-pandemic, so we actually became a remote business um, one year into the operation, and we've been remote ever since. It's been fantastic. I plan on never having a physical building ever again, and that's part of one of our keys to success is just really embracing a remote culture as an agency. Some of the things that I haven't been able to do, though, is figure out how to have fun, right, in a culture and organization. So like at a, at a, a typical big star, rock star agency, think California, New York, that kind of thing. You could have snack walls and beer Fridays. I don't drink. Uh, and, and you could have all these sort of events and culture building opportunities where people are getting together and hoorahing. Now, personally, I think most of that stuff is fake, but um, at the same time, I'll, I'll never know if I could do it any better. 
But what I do know is if I asked everybody in my whole organization, what was your favorite part about working at Amazon, my Amazon guy? And I would hear something very similar time and time again. The endless amount of support and ability to learn things. People, 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 learn, learn, learn. Testimonial after testimonial. We created the core values at my Amazon guy um, on paper about a year ago when we went through our um, traction and and you know trying to go through all of that. Self implemented the, that myself. Um, definitely recommend it. EOS system and whatnot. And and we 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 articulated our our core values as growth, eagerness. I actually chose impatience when I first launched this core value, um, but in getting some employee feedback and reviews, people really do not like the connotation that impatience gives. So we rebranded that as eagerness and we've got a beaver there to kind of support that. Um, strategic communication, because there's always communication going back and forth between us and clients and between each other. And the larger the organization gets, the more important that strategic communication has become. Uh, we use Asana for project management. We're constantly doing project updates and hiring project managers and success managers to make sure things are on point. And then at the end of the day, we're in the business of nonstop deliverables. So if we don't tell our customers what we're up to all the time, they <clears throat> ask questions. And it's you know a piece of advice to other agencies out there. You want to answer every question your clients have before they ask it. And if you do that, you're doing a good job. Tech savviness. So uh, this one is one of the hardest to measure, in my opinion. You know, we put down here 55 words per minute. Um, the ability just to be an Excel guru, uh, a Google enthusiast, train one time, master it kind of aspect. And it's it's a really hard one to get correct. But, um, you know, with the with the nonstop deductive troubleshooting aspect of selling on a, on Amazon or other things in e-commerce, I feel very firmly that's a great core value for us to select. And then our fifth and final one, get on base. It doesn't have to be a home run. You just have to get on base. And this is coming out of the Athletic A's Moneyball movie with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. And just the fact that uh, we could get everybody to just get on first base because the next guy at bat can hit you home and get an RBI, right? And, and the measure twice, cut once framework just really doesn't work at an agency that has to deliver by five o'clock something of value every day to their, their uh, you know, clients and whatnot. We also separated out some manager core values like uh, the ability to be soft on the people and tough on the issues and have extreme ownership because without those things, things break down. And we use the EOS and traction scoring system with a plus, plus or minus or a minus. And if somebody has a minus on any one of these core values, we fire them. And that might seem harsh. And obviously we give people a chance to to work into those core values, but we're really firm on this. We're going to attract people who these four or five core values are just a home run for them. And as long as there's a plus on three and a plus and minus on two, that's a passing grade. But any minuses on any of those core values, boom, you're gone. And that's because we need people who are going to be exceptional uh, servants to our clients and whatnot. Um, the other thing that I feel like we've done really well is this pyramid of, of my Amazon guy. And I'll move my head over here for a second. Um, employees have to come first at an organization, especially one that's client facing. Uh, and, and the way that I built this pyramid is I, I made ownership a butler at the very bottom because in my opinion, ownership is main job is to serve ev everybody above them, Right. Today's my birthday and I've turned 35 and just kind of reflecting all of the missions and accomplishments we've been able to do, uh, both at my Amazon guy and just my own personal career, it's been quite the adventure. Uh, when I first started out my career, I was actually a television reporter, which is why I like to do videos and communicate like this so frequently. It's also why my style is very short, concise, straight to the point, inverted pyramid, the actual opposite of what we've been looking at here. And that's because the information that matters most has to be in the headline. And if people want to keep reading, they can. That five-second attention span has always been on my mind. And, and so I really hate the clickbait videos you see on YouTube. And, and, and although this video will be a little bit more meandering, because it's kind of a look back of 300 employees and 
all the all the cool things we've been able to accomplish. But fi finishing out this pyramid here, we have ownership at the bottom, management right above them, systems above that, clients, and then employees. And the real key note here is that employees must come first at my Amazon guide because if you have employees at the top of the pyramid, you're going to get better employees. And if you have better employees, they're going to treat customers better, which means what? Better customer experience. Better employees, better customer experience. Therefore, fire the asshole clients and empower your best employees. And if they have a concern in working with the client, you, you, you set boundaries, right? One of the things that we did is, is implemented the communication workflow. We ask clients for expectations before they onboard with us. I'll even ask things like questions like on a scale of one to 10, what is the um, goal of your, your Amazon brand? One being profit at the cost of growth and 10 being growth at the cost of profit. What's your number? And I know if somebody tells me a one, two, or three, they probably shouldn't be hiring a marketing agency. And so we like to set those expectations and pair that correctly so that when we're going about uh, our business, it's fun to do what we do. One of the most important things that I set out to do uh, as a CEO of an agency was to always hire for competency. I think the mistake a lot of businesses make is they don't embrace competency. And just as one example, I completed my MBA in three and a half months. And it was at a, it was at a state university called Western Governors University. And it's a competency-based model. It worked out really great for me. Everything's a data point. I'm all about competency and accomplishment. And if you can prove you know the material, great. I don't care what college you went to. I don't care if you're a Harvard grad or you're a community college grad. It means nothing to me. I don't care where you've been. I care what you know and how you can add value to my company today. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience, sure, I'm going to pay you less. Absolutely. But for competency in a competency-based organization, you get to accelerate if you're a smart, uh, you know, value-adding contributing member of society into the organization. And so what this has done is it attracts other competent members. And when competency surrounded by more competency and layers and layers of competency, what that does is it propels the whole organization upward. And I just feel like most businesses have lost this, right? Uh, the, woke, the woke crowd for starters and, and hiring for diversity None of this is, is business, guys. That is the opposite of good business practices. So what this means is you want to have a, a culture that has all of the knowledge and the keys to success to actually drive your mission forward. Now, my mission as a company is to be the number one Amazon education company in the world. I just happen to be an agency. But then we've gone out and we've created all of these other things that really help us accomplish that. We started Mag School, right? Which is courses for as little as ten dollars to go sign up and learn how to sell on Amazon. We also have over a thousand videos on YouTube, and every Friday at noon, you can come in and ask me any question you want to help you on your way during your Amazon journey. Video after video, topic after topic, playlist after playlist from everything from marketing, operations, finance, and much, much more. One of the coolest projects that I undertook in the last six months was hiring 130 interns in about 65 days. Sounds absurd. It's definitely a BHAG. That's a big, hairy, audacious goal. And it was wildly successful in our organization. Most of those interns were in the Philippines, some in Pakistan, and, and very few in the United States. We tried to hire more in the U.S., but really found a much higher success rate and a willingness to adopt our culture and best practices overseas. And so as the organization has grown, we've had more and more support roles overseas as well as our client-facing roles in the United States for like brand management and strategy and direction and, and, and been able to build those relationships successfully. With inflation at 25% and looking ahead to see like how this is going to be a sustainable model, well, one of two things would have to happen. I'd either have to raise my prices as an organization or I'm going to have to lower my capital required to pay the staff to run it 
to run the price at parity. And so while I think we're heading into a major depression right now, I'm sleeping easy at night because I've been able to successfully create a model with nonstop education and teaching people how to go about learning these complicated tasks on Amazon and, and, and be able to service accounts with high exceptional amounts of, of labor and, and success rates. And while um, I, I feel like the main reason people have hired my Amazon guy well up into 2021 and end of the year was to grow sales. Well, I'm looking into 2022 and I think we're off the cliff of depression. I don't think it's a recession. I think we're in a depression uh, in the beginning of it. And we're having to rethink like a business model technique where it can't just be grow sales, grow, 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 right? Like that's just not going to work. So one of the things that we've started to pivot towards is peace of mind. There's all these activities that you can do uh, on, on the Amazon platform. And there's so many things and boxes you can check, right? It's a never ending cycle of optimization when you're running paid media and traffic and designs and whatnot. And so we've started to pivot towards this peace of mind concept that like all of these things can be managed in one location. Even the small things like social posts where um, it's basically Instagram for Amazon and you can get a lot more traffic from your competitors for free and all these kinds of small things and been testing out different, um, you know, quality of life that we can provide um, our customers. And so with a large organization last year, I thought the Amazon aggregators, when they came in and dumped like $8 billion, $11 billion into the space, I wondered for about three months whether I would end up working for the aggregators. They were just going to take everything over, or so we all thought, right? And here we are 15 months later, and big companies like Thrasio are laying off hundreds of employees, and they're not the only aggregator that is suffering during these times. I've never had to do layoffs, and I probably never will because we've thought ahead on what the um, economic landscape is going to look like, and we're hiring up, and we're going to be one of the 5% of companies that grows during a depression because we're attracting uh, the avatar of learning and growth and all these mission things that we're trying to accomplish, right? Like I want to be a uh, 1,000 brands strong here in three years from now, and we're at like 250, 255 right now, and I think we're well on our way to making that happen. Other things that I've learned along the way include putting all information in one place. We we use all Google Drives, we use Slack, and controlling information and, and obviously security and privacy and all that good stuff too, but just being able to access all of the SOPs, a library of directions and where to go and where to start and who does what and who does what when and everything outlined in an organization as complex of an ecosystem as such as ours and constantly having to rebuild it too. What's really interesting if you Google the term culture, it's defined as the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. Another second definition is customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or social group. But I'd really like to zero in on human intellectual achievement. Achievement being the biggest keyword here. And so I think a lot of the time when people think about culture, they don't realize um, it correctly, right? Like you don't just have culture for the sake of diversity. You have culture for the sake to hit your company's mission to cause an intellectual achievement. And that's really important to me as I've built up my leadership staff um, and, and whatnot. I also feel like knowing yourself and who you are is one of the most important things you can do in business. Four out of five of my top strengths are high drive. Do you know yours? Mine are strategic competition, command, learner, that's the one that's not drive, and self-assurance. And I made my Amazon guy to utilize my strengths. It's obvious to the people that I surround myself with, they support me and bolster my weaknesses. And I took the strengths finder more than 10 years ago. You know, it's kind of like culture index 1.0 for me. And it's interesting to kind of, you know, look at that. And, and I was talking to, you know, my executive team the other day, and one of the members said, Stephen, your strengths 
Finder describes you to a T. No doubt if Mag was a baby, it would undeniably be your child. Can see all of your strengths and how Mag is structured. And that's this, that's a great thing, by the way. It's a really good sign that I made the company after my own image, right? Uh, that, that has allowed us to succeed. And it's also um, kind of fun, right, to give life to something. That's every entrepreneur's dream is to give life to something. So as we celebrate 300 employees, as I celebrate my 35th birthday today, I'm just really excited by culture and hiring and people. And I get to do all kinds of fun things. And I still go on interviews. Um, and I spend most of my time teaching and training and, and bolstering culture up within the organization because culture is a top-down thing, you cannot build culture from the bottom up. It just simply doesn't work. You have to build it from the top down. And, and in my case, I built it from the ground up, from the top down, as I built the entire organization. I made sure of it. I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had worked in so many organizations that fell apart because of a lack of a cohesive mission, uh, a culture, or a vision. And you really need to know where you want to go. You have to write it down and you have to find the right people to get on the bus with you to go to that destination. And sometimes, you know, I grew up in Utah and I had to go to Maryland to find my wife and now I live in Georgia. And sometimes you got to take a detour to hit one mission before you go to the next. And then finally, when you get to that mountain and you're just like, this wasn't the right mountain, this is not the place. <clears throat> sometimes you feel like the Mormon pioneers heading out west and then finally, they get to the Utah Valley and they say, this is the place. And then the next thing they did is they freaking made a grid system for the entire road system. So like you can take a straight line every direction, west, east, north, south, throughout the entire Salt Lake Valley, right? Like that was strategic vision. That is exactly how I've built my company. It's exactly how we've positioned it. And I hope I get to make the next video um, a couple years from now when we hit a thousand employees. It'll be really fun and exciting to be able to do that, look back and see um, see that milestone also accomplished. Um, so by the way, we are always hiring at My Amazon Guy. And if you want to check us out, just go to myamazonguy.com slash jobs. You can join the team. We're always hiring for competent individuals. And you've heard firsthand, first, first from the CEO himself, founder of the company, why we do what we do. And if that was attractive to you, we've got positions in brand management, directorships, advertising, copywriting, graphics, social media, sales management, and much, much more. We also need uh, IT support staff. We're building out thousands of automations and Zapier tasks and much, much more. Uh, so check us out, myamazonguy.com slash jobs. We've got employees all over the world from the United States and North America down to the South American continent, Argentina and Brazil. We have people over in the European continent with the United Kingdom, Spain, Romania, Turkey, also over in Asia with Pakistan and the Philippines. So hope you guys check us out. We're super excited to continue our growth. We need your help. You're part of our future and our culture. Check out these other videos where I talk about competency and hiring. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy.